Hello everyone, and in this video, we are going to be reapplying thermal paste on this Lenovo ThinkPad. And this is my ThinkPad from college, so it's been many years and I'm glad that I'm finally getting to do this because the fan has been spinning quite loud and I think that we aren't having as good thermal management as we previously did. So the very first thing in this process is basically getting a Phillips screwdriver and on the back of the ThinkPad there are going to be seven Phillips screws, one of which is hidden behind the removable battery up top. And so once you remove the seven Phillips screws and you don't fully take them out because they stay seated in place because there's these retainers behind them on the other side of the plate. Um, so you just need to fully loosen them. You then go around the edges of the back case with some kind of pry tool like a guitar pick or a uh, spudger thing. So once you do all that, uh, very carefully separate this because I have had this happen to me more than a few times and I've seen it happen to more people many times where as you're pulling this case off from the actual body of the laptop you can crack these things you just want to be really careful when you do it um, to avoid breaking this little metal case and so uh, I'm gonna let you guys see all this in fast motion and then we'll get to the part where we can actually begin to look at the main board and the CPU and the fan and the cooler. And now that we've got good access at the motherboard, we can see the fan and the cooler for the actual CPU. So I'm going to use some compressed air just to try to get any dust in there that might be inhibiting the thermal conductivity of our system. And after I do that, the other thing we're going to be working on is getting the little fan connectors separated from the motherboard. And this is that little thing that you need to pull out uh, parallel to the motherboard. So you don't lift up on it, you pull it away from the motherboard in parallel. So as I'm trying to do here um, with two little plastic things to help pull this thing out. Um, after I got it a little bit separated, I finished pulling it out the rest of the way with, the, uh, with just my hand. But you want to be really careful with this because if you tear off that part from the motherboard, uh, you'll need to do some component level repair to get this thing working again, which will be very expensive. So. Um, after that, we've got four Phillips screws, and so we're going to use a screw, screwdriver to loosen these screws up. They are torqued on pretty well from Lenovo, so um, you want to make sure you've got a good bit on here that's able to properly grab down on those screws. And again, there's little retainers on the back of those screws that Lenovo installs from the factory to make it so that they can't fall away. Um, but in my case, I completely took them all the way out just because I wanted to make sure that nothing was holding on that CPU cooler. Um, as I was pulling it away from the uh, actual motherboard because I didn't want to break anything. So I just used the little spudger that I had to kind of help pull the threads up and away from the actual retainer. So I got the screws completely off of the actual cooler and then gently lifting up on the actual fan. And uh, it was a little bit sticky. I don't know why. So um, the, I didn't spill any soda. But um, yeah, so just gently lifting up on this thing and removing it and being really careful to not break anything because this stuff can get kind of pricey. Um, but we got a good angle of the CPU cooler. We can see all the copper they use. We can see the old thermal paste and we can see how it's kind of flaky and a bit crusty. So um, the more stuff you have there, not good. So I'm going to use a cloth and some ethanol to clean off the old thermal paste, both from the actual CPU cooler and from the actual dye on the CPU itself. And Interestingly, I saw some some other ThinkPads that there's two, uh, some ThinkPads, they only have like one location where you have your thermal paste applying to actually contact it with the cooler. Um, and in mine, it's got two, so that might be like the CPU and GPU or some other weird CPU architecture that I haven't seen prior. But um, basically, yeah, so this is a ThinkPad T460 and it has the two uh, dies right there that you do need to make sure you get cleaned uh, with the ethanol prior to applying the new thermal paste and um, I just I don't really care about the stuff around the chip too much um, it's mostly just the surface itself and the surface of your cooler that you want to make sure is clean and free of oils that's the reason why I use ethanol don't use water because water is conductive um, so ethanol and then the ethanol evaporates very quickly which is also great and I was just trying to blow away little residual bits around the die just so that I have as good of a contact as I can between the CPU and the actual copper heat sink that it's contacting. And then from there, I've got some Arctic Silver 5, um, and I think I just give it a last little good clean just to make sure I'm happy with this because it's been many years since I've touched anything. Um, and so now I'm going to get some Arctic Silver 5, 
and I'm going to put on about a rice grain worth of volume onto the surface of that thing and the other die too and you don't want to you know add way too much here but you know enough and then you just use a plastic thing over your finger to help spread this because you don't want to get any contaminants into that thermal paste because you want to make sure you have the best thermal conductivity you can possibly have and so after we do this we get everything all nice and clean and uh, basically we're just making sure that we get the best cooling performance we can out of our little laptop and take advantage of this opportunity to make sure that we have the best or most surface area possible for heat conduction to happen um, and so once we do all this stuff it's basically pretty simple you just throw this thing back on and um, some people you can jiggle it a little bit kind of like that just to make sure that you are getting that nice thermal uh, contact between or that direct contact between the surface of the chip the thermal compound and the actual copper heatsink and so once you've done that um, I'm at threading in the Phillips screws onto the CPU cooler again and these ones were torqued pretty hard so I torqued them pretty hard back on too this is the first time it's ever been done on this laptop so I just wanted to have a similar torque spec as what Lenovo had. So that thing is pressed firmly onto the CPU, and then we're just reconnecting up that fan cable into that motherboard. And once we've done all that stuff, we can clip back on the top case that we have and screw in all of our uh, retainer screws for the top case, put in our new battery, and then from there, we are good to go. I just wanted to run a quick check before I put it all back together because um, so I hit the power button here and I want to make sure that fan actually spun up because worst case scenario is like you didn't connect something the way you should have and then um, that would lead to some issues. So we've got all that great and now all we need to do is snap everything back together and screw all the Phillips screws back down, reattach the battery and double check that everything's working the way you expect it to. And thank you all for watching. I hope this video helps and I'll talk to you next time.